Dr. Henry has put his point in front, and uh, I would like to contradict a few of his uh, comments uh, regarding the renal artery stenosis and uh, whether the medical management is better. The basic uh, management includes whether it is medical or whether it is inventional, uh, interventional. And my basic would be to show you some evidences uh, proving the point that medical management still remains superior to intervention. What are the medical? What are the benefits which we derive from the medical therapy, and why the renal artery stenting does not help? What are the reasons for that? Uh, atherosclerotic disease is a very common clinical condition. It is associated with hypertension, with reduction in GFR, and also associated with a significant mortality, especially because of cardiovascular causes. <laughs> Definitely, I would agree there has been an improvement in the technological success rates, uh, but it is not like the only technical success which is important. The clinical relevance of uh, the technical success is also very important from the clinicians, or especially from the nephrologist's point of view. And there's a lot of controversy which exists regarding the benefit. So basically, it's again, I would say, a hotly debated topic with majority of their interventionalists on one side and be poor nephrologists just standing in favor of medical therapy. And as with all controversial topics, it is all the groups which feel strongly in favor of their own viewpoints. It's a very common clinical, I would say, uh, more common than what we commonly think in terms of uh, the occurrence of this disease. And it's commonly picked up during the coronary artery uh, procedures. And almost uh, about 8% of the patients who undergo coronary angiography have been found to have a significant uh, renal artery stenosis. And estimated would be that the almost about 0.8% of the people have significant atherosclerotic disease. However, if we go to the uh, occurrence in terms of the uh, progression to CKD and ESRD, the uh, estimation is just about 0.3% of the total population, of the total ESRD population. Uh, despite this high prevalence, very few patients with atherosclerotic renal disease actually present with advanced CKD. So it is, that is what I'm trying to say, whether the technical success is actually transforming into uh, the uh, clinical relevance. So I would, this basically points to the fact that uh, the, uh, most of the uh, atherosclerotic renal disease does not progress to ESRD or the patients actually die before they reach to that stage. Now the options which have been available since uh, last 50, 30, 40 years. Surgery, which was there, definitely has gone out of vogue. It then became the angioplasty. The angioplasty, there were various studies which showed, uh, which were compared with medical therapy. Then came the stenting. Medical management has actually improved ever since the advent of the ACE inhibitors and the ARBs. And uh, the earlier randomized trials, they compared angioplasty without stents and medical management. There was no significant improvement in terms of blood pressure control, but the data on the renal functions were very questionable at that time, and some even showed that there was a worsening of renal function. So that was basic, the main concern. The STAR and the astral trials, which have already been uh, sh uh, discussed, they showed that uh, the renal intervention with medical therapy showed uh, no benefit. Uh, the renal, uh, the angiographic, uh, sorry, angioplasty did not show any beneficial effect. And uh, so basically the uh, point which we would like to drive home is whether stenting the atherosclerotic renal arteries, we have to be a little more cautious and we have to be less aggressive. The various uh, studies which have cited uh, the uh, indications for interventions they have been basically either retrospective or subgroup analysis of randomized trials, and there have been conflicting data regarding as such resistive indexes. So uh, we have in the paucity of any randomized controlled trials, where the indications for renal interventions again are still debatable. The uh, drastic study, which was a first randomized controlled trial to, effect, to study the effect of angioplasty uh, on blood pressure, the overall intervention was seen in 54 out of 56 patients, and stenting was done for just two patients. In the subgroup analysis, the patients who crossed over, because of resistant hypertension, they were found more likely to benefit from angioplasty. 
The uh, study design of this included 106 hypertensive patients with a renal artery stenosis of more than 50 and a creatinine of less than 2. They were either assigned to a PTA versus the medical treatment, followed up at 3 and 12 months. The results, the blood pressure remained the same in both the groups. The only difference which they found was the num lesser number of antihypertensive medications in the uh, angioplasty group as compared to the medical group and the renal functions between the two groups remained the same. However, there were few shortcomings of this study. Um, there were no stent placements, there was a lot of crossovers, was again the uh, physiologically significant uh, stenosis was not considered. So finally, they also concluded that the, in the treatment of patients with hypertension and renal artery stenosis, angioplasty has little advantage over antihypertensive drug therapy. Then came the other uh, randomized trials, the STAR and the ASTRAL. Again, STAR did not show any significant benefit. They enrolled 140 patients with osteal stenosis greater than 50%. The blood pressure, which was very well controlled at less than 140 by 90, and the creatinine clearance, which varied widely from 15 to 80. They were again randomized to undergo stenting or medical therapy. The blood pressure was treated according to the protocol, including ACE inhibitors and angiotensin blockers, and all patients received statin regardless of their lipid levels, so optimum medical management. At two years, the primary endpoint, again, which was taken as a creatinine clearance decline of more than, uh, greater than or equal to 20%, again, has been shown previously by Dr. Henry, was just about 16% in the stent group and 22% in the medication group, which was not statistically significant. And there was no difference which was seen in the secondary endpoints in terms of the degree of blood pressure control, or even in terms of cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. Again, they came to the conclusion that stent placement with medical treatment had no clear effect on progression of impaired renal function, but it led to a small number of significant procedure-related complications. The study findings favor a conservative approach to patients with atherosclerotic disease, focused on cardiovascular risk factor management and avoiding stenting. The astral tile, again, did not show any clinical benefit. Uh, 806 patients, equally in 403 in the re revascularization group and 403 in the medical treatment group. At a mean follow-up of 33 months, there was no significant difference treated in the decline group in terms of decline in renal function or blood pressure control. In fact, renal function worsened slightly in both groups. There was no difference in the rates of any secondary outcomes, and there were no differences in outcomes among subgroup analysis based on the severity of stenosis, renal length, the baseline estimated GFR, baseline creatinine, and rate of progression of renal dysfunction. The uh, graphs, again, which show that even the decline in both the groups was similar, so no no improvement in terms of uh, renal functional improvement in the angioplasty group. In terms of control of blood pressure, again, there was slightly dif slight difference in terms of medical and revascularization group, not reaching up to a statistical significance. In terms of clinical events, in terms of first renal events, which were in uh, the uh, development of either acute kidney injury, initiation of dialysis, transplantation, death from renal failure, or nephrectomy. We found that, they found that the, uh, in the revascularization group, there were about uh, 57 patients who had these complications, whereas in the medical group, it was again about 58 patients, so similar results. So what benefit did angioplasty have in terms of uh, renal dysfunction? For cardiovascular events, again, similar results with 51% in the medical group having cardiovascular events in terms of myocardial infarction, angina, or death from cardiovascular causes, as compared to 49% in the revascularization group. So in terms of clinical events, in uh, either renal or cardiovascular, the effects, the results were almost same. In terms of survival also, followed up for almost five years, the results in both the groups were similar. So, revascularization may not benefit renal artery stenosis. But still, I would, uh, as uh, Dr. Kalra, uh, Philip Kalra had says that uh, the challenge is now to identify the minority of patients with atherosclerotic renal stenosis who may benefit from revascularization.
these are a few trials. Uh, the three first three trials using only angioplasty, the other two include stenting. Uh, almost uh, variable numbers from 806 to 55 followed for variable number of periods, except for this Scottish study in which the systolic mean blood pressure, especially in the bilateral group, improved with revascularization, and also in the MR style, the uh, antihypertensive medications were lesser in terms of renal vascularization. Rest of all these parameters, blood pressure, uh, decrease in GFR, renal and cardiovascular events were almost similar. So again, proving the fact that angioplasty again has got no clear benefit over medical therapy. These are basically the results of all these studies, Webster, Pollen, and Van Jarswell from the uh, three studies, the Scottish and the uh, drastic studies. They all show that there is no benefit of using angioplasty as compared to medical management. This is basically a kind of meta-analysis from all the studies, uh, uh, randomized trials, comparative trials, and cohort studies in terms of outcomes of death, kidney function, blood pressure, cardiovascular events, and adverse events. Only in terms of kidney function and blood pressure were the strength of evidence acceptable, but rest of the other parameters in terms of death, cardiovascular, and adverse events were all very weak. A uh, lot of studies were there. In terms of death, there was no difference in the mortality. In terms of kidney function, there was no substantial difference in terms of kidney functions. In terms of blood pressure, there was some evidence that BP may be lowered more after angioplasty than after medical treatment alone, particularly with bilateral disease. Again, I would like to tell here that the decrease in the blood pressures, the systolic blood pressures or the diastolic blood pressures were hardly maybe around maybe 10 millimeters of mercury in terms of systolic and maybe about seven to eight millimeters of mercury in terms of diastolic blood pressures. So hardly any difference in terms of the decrease in blood pressures. In the cardiovascular events, they found that there was no large difference in comparative studies for four years. The adverse events, obviously we cannot compare because renal artery stenting and angioplasty is associated with far worse consequences in terms of death, in terms of deterioration of renal functions and other ethroembolic phenomena. Whereas medical therapy may be associated with complications like just maybe orthostatic hypotension or maybe some uh, GI disturbances. The CORAL trial is an ongoing multicenter randomized control trial, which may be of additional help in future to predict what is the optimal management. It is an NIH-funded trial with more than 100 centers and a lot of patients, again, to uh, tell which is the better modality of treatment, and also in terms of respect of uh, clinically important outcomes. But in all these groups, the patients are still receiving the optimal medical therapy. What do you mean by an optical medical optimal medical therapy? It includes a tight blood pressure control, less than 130 by 80, just by using antihypertensives. If you can, if you bring it down to 120 by 70 by using angiography or angioplasty, which is costing th lakhs of rupees, burning a hole into a patient's pocket, what are we actually achieving? In terms of tight glycemic control, in terms of hyperlipidemia, antiplatelet agents, and lifestyle modifications. The current practice is to use antiplatelets, lipid lowering, statins, and ACE or ARBs. Recent randomized trials in atherosclerotic renal artery stenosis show that REN, uh, RAS blockade offers significant benefit in terms of protection of renal functions as well as survival. However, the use of uh, ACE inhibitors is associated with acute kidney injury. A lot of patients who had received angiotensin blockers, they showed a lower incidence of death and cardiovascular events and a higher incidence of AKI but they had a lower incidence of long-term dialysis. So coming on to the question, why does renal artery stenting not work in atherosclerotic renal artery disease? Atherosclerotic renovascular disease is a complex disease. It involves not only the main, but also the other intrarenal vessels. Stenting may not have an effect on intrarenal atherosclerotic renovascular disease, and also, there are a lot of complex pathways, like the oxidative stress, the intrarenal RAS activation and hypertension, which may also be uh, in, in, instrumental in causing hypertension. But the 
uh, angioplasty will not have an impact on this, but the medical management may have. Secondly, the atherosclerotic renal arteries may, the intrarenal vasculature may protect the uh, further kidney damage in terms of high blood pressures. Uh, revascularization in this situation may actually accelerate intrarenal vascular damage, exposing you to a higher level of hypertension. Thirdly, there can be higher incidences of complications like atheroembolism, dissection of renal artery and cholesterol embolization. In fact, stenting it is associated with a periprocedural mortality of, all, um, of almost about 1 to 3 percent and a morbidity of almost about 7 percent. So finally, in the risk-benefit analysis, the advantage of taking three as compared to four blood pressure medications must be weighed against these risks. Fourthly, the uh, large burden of atherosclerotic disease the, by the time the patient presents to us is too late for an intervention in a singular vascular bed to alter, to alter the outcomes. Like they are subjected to complications including contrast, atheroembolism and reocclusion as has been pointed out earlier. I would stick to this graph as you can see in terms of intervention. What is their effect of intervention on glomerular filtration? There has been just a slight improvement in angiography, slight stabilization, but mostly we have seen either a decline or there is no change in trajectory or there is an accelerated decline in terms of renal functions. So what is the benefit of using an angioplasty or angiography in such circumstances? So coming to the question, does anyone benefit from renal artery stenosis, uh, renal artery stenting in such kind of a situation? Obviously, identifying them is a challenge. Significant atherosclerotic renal artery disease and recurrent flash edemas are the main indications and severe hypertension not controlled despite optimal medical therapy. Even in them, the key to success is the identification of a significant distal intrarenal disease and prevention of atheroembolism. So, for whom the intervention should be considered? Obviously not for patients whose renal functions have remained stable for the past one year and whose hypertension can be controlled medically. It should be considered only for those who have had a recurrent episodes of congestive heart failure, especially with bilateral renal artery stenosis or solitary functioning kidney. In patients whom there has been a rapid decline in renal functions and in patients whom it is impossible to control uh, hypertension despite medications, more than three antihypertensives. So all renal arteries with stenosis do not and need not be stented. There must be a good clinical indication and a hemodynamically significant stenosis, more than 70% for such patients to be subjected. The pre-existing long-standing long hypertension, a small kidney size, a resistive index of more than 0.8, physiologically insignificant stenosis, advanced stage, especially with pre-existing hypertension is definitely not an indication to go for revascularization. So the key points which I would like to draw is that the two randomized trials versus, uh, of intervention versus medical therapy have shown negative results for intervention. It is not recommended if the renal functions have been stable. It is recommended only for flash pulmonary edemas or for bilateral. But I would say that stenosis by itself, even if bilateral, is not an indication for renal artery stenting. So I would like to conclude that the randomized trials, they provide no support to the notion that renal angioplasty with stenting significantly improves blood pressure, preserves renal function or reduces episodes of congestive heart failure. This is basically what we want in our clinical practice. So if it does not give us these benefits, what is the point of subjecting the patient to an intervention? And also subjecting the patient to the procedure related morbidity and mortality. So agents that block the RAS improve outcomes and should be a part of the medical regimen in ARAS. So medical therapy effectively controls atheromatous renovascular disease at all levels of vasculature and it still remains the best therapy for
uh, atheromatous renovascular disease. Thank you.